wanted to take a second and, and talk to you about uh, some new initiatives that we're creating across the country. I uh, thought it was very important for us to discuss these matters. I um, haven't done this before I even talk to you. Normally, if you've seen me, you've seen me um, writing in uh, on one of my uh, journalistic projects, CNN or OneWorld.com or any of the other commentaries that I've done. Uh, but I think that the video is a new means of communication that has to be used. Hopefully you can see me and, you know, we got the good, proper amount of lighting. It's getting pretty late where I'm at here in Chicago. I uh, wanted to talk to you because as we stand now, uh, the new initiative that we're starting is our throwdown of the gauntlet against the National Rifle Association. This organization has been historically a, a racist organization, and we really need to take time and help people understand that this lobby is not what it pretends to be or um, exposes itself to be one way in public, the other way behind closed doors. At the end of this particular video, I'm going to show you a little bit of proof. Uh, but what I want to do is... Uh, I want to talk about, you know, us getting together, fighting in a way, because right now we're in a time of economic and social crisis and the resources that we can build together will be valuable as we collaborate on positive change. The resources that we provide each other and just simple communication uh, through cause through causes we'll work with causes to develop. Uh, sign-ins and, and, and polls and whatever way that we can do to strengthen up, to strengthen our struggle against this organization. And it's not going to happen overnight. We know it. It's going to be over the course of a few days. So with that being said, you know, I look forward to working with you. Um, back to the battle about the National Rifle Association. And I, uh, I wrote down some facts um, that I researched about the history of the NRA, and I think it might be vital to where we are uh, going. So basically, let's talk about, you know, when its initial uh, inception, when it was created back in the 1800s. And you can research this. And if you have any uh, questions, please feel free to reach out to me. The NRA was started as a way to stop the freed slaves from the Civil War from owning guns. It was built in theory for racist purposes free black slaves who have fought in the civil war in the in the union army uh were allowed to own guns in the 1800s but there was a, a situation called the black holes which was a set of laws and policies to keep the free slaves at bay so you can look that up again it's called the black holes Uh, one of the successful lobbies, which the NRA was around at that time, was to stop the free slaves from owning guns in free society. Newly free slaves were not allowed to own it again through the Black Coast, so check that out. You might think of gun control and feel, or you might think of gun control and think... From my cold, dead hands. What you probably don't think of is racism. But the history of gun control is a history riddled with racial discrimination and some irony. In his 2011 book, Gunfight, UCLA professor of law Adam Winkler argued, gun control measures have been tied to anti-black discrimination for most of the country's history. Before the Civil War, the right to own guns came with the right to own black slaves. After the Civil War, black Americans were finally able to own guns, which made many white Americans fear an armed rebellion. In fact, the KKK was founded in part to seize the arms of blacks in the South. One of the biggest ironies today in the gun control debate is that groups that once supported strict gun control measures now oppose them. Like the National Rifle Association, this gun-loving organization didn't always fight for the right of all Americans to own guns. In the 1920s, the NRA promoted restrictive laws that only allowed suitable people with proper reason to own firearms because of a spike in urban crime. And in the eyes of law enforcement, immigrants, especially Italian Americans, were not necessarily the most suitable with the most proper reasons to own guns. 
Fast forward to the civil rights movement, where black Americans were resisting state-enforced violence. Not coincidentally, this was also the era when major gun control measures were passed. Until 1967, California, a state that today has some of the strictest gun laws in the country, was in fact open carry. During that time, the resistance group, the Black Panthers, began openly arming its members and patrolling for police abuses on the streets of Oakland. The images of armed black activists created a frenzy, and then California Governor Ronald Reagan and the NRA supported legislation that ended the right to openly carry guns in the state. Then there were two major assassinations in 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert F. Kennedy. Believing that easy access to guns was partly to blame for the assassinations and some of the race riots that followed, the federal government passed the most expansive gun control measures in decades, the Gun Control Act of 1968. Today, the politics of gun control have shifted dramatically, but race still plays a role. Consider this. When American politicians, the NRA, and certain conservative groups and militias want their guns for protection, the question to ask is, protection so, from who? Look, we are in a battle. We're in a struggle for the long term. We need everybody, everybody who will be willing to help us in this battle. We need you. Let's go ahead and make this fight happen. God bless. Thank you.